yeah, work with the consequences of genetic changing. Can you hear anything, anything also? Do you hear me clear? Yes. Yes. So what we are working with is consequences of genetic changing changes considering D by E and different production environments. And our questions for this presentation here, what stakeholders can learn from our work? And this is Marco, Christian Björn and me. I think we have some challenges for dairy production here. We have some climate impact. We have differentiated future production systems. We have genetic by environment interactions. We have animal welfare. We have strong new genetic tools. That's what we are going to talk about. And we have a diversification of consumer preferences. We have genetic diversity to consider. And then for those working in breeding organizations, I would say we have a less cooperative thinking uh, within these years. So this is things, this is challenges, challenges, challenges that we have to consider when, when working with these different tools. Uh, the overall idea in, in this year is to try to see how to find the interaction between the production systems, which is, you see on the picture to the left, is some profits production, it's some different ways of having cows, it's some different products, you see some different cheeses uh, at the pictures as well. And this has to interact with how we, we, when we make up our breeding goal, the attribute genotype, and then it also has to be co work together with the breeding schemes that we are setting up, which breeds we are using. You see some different ones on the, to the right. So it's all these interactions between production systems, products, and breeding goal, breeding scheme, and breeding technologies. That's the area we are working within. And uh, there are some of these challenges for dairy production. These we hope to can be able to at least help handle with, with those systems that we are working with in Work Package 5 and together with Work Package 6. So it is about where well, you see that we have some cows walking up uh, the, the steps, the genetic steps. But the very, very important thing is that it's so, so important that they walk the right direction because if they walk the wrong direction, it takes us just as long to have them walk down again when, when we are talking about genetics. So for that, we would like to, to, to have use to see how do, do these changes that we can do with genetics, these we will work with in Adam. And then, in fact, also, because we have to consider uh, diversity, then, then consider a bit the, the uh, optimal contribution selection, which can be handled with the program either. And then, of course, these gains that we can achieve having different breeding goals, different breeding schemes, we'll see how does this work at animal level using the Aquel model in Work Packet 6. And, and, and also, Jay in Edinburgh is going to work on some herd uh, management, how it will work in an overall herd management system. Uh, so that's the idea. But that's some of the challenges that we are facing. How can we can we make this appealing for for, 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 for for the producers and for the breeding organizations? Because when we are talking about breeding, then the breeding organizations are those which sort of create the genetic changes and decide which breeding goal to have, decide which breeding program to carry out. So what we would like to, 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 to say is, is that the important thing is here to have the stakeholders sort of understand the, the importance of having the right animals for the specific system. And for that, we have some tools which could help us coming towards that. Because management in dairy heads, it's, it's, uh, it's about many things. It's about feeding, it's about rapid production, it's about building and technologies, and it's about breeding. And I think in man, for many years, breeding has been seen as something which do not belong to management in a dairy herd, but it does. Because breeding is a management tool at a middle to long-term uh, perspective. If I decide in my herd that I would like to have some 
cows which were more dual purpose. Then I have to, it, it'll take me three to seven years before I have sort of uh, made any changes, in fact, within my herd, unless I, of course, sell my full herd and buy a new one. But so it's a long term, uh, uh, middle to long term perspective of breeding at herd level. And if we see at population level, then it's even longer because then we have to set the breeding goal and have the breeding schemes allied with these breeding goals so that we can achieve the changes that we want. So management is about uh, uh, finding the right genetic material for the right production systems. And then there'll be, so, and that's what we are working with in, in our part of the project. We work with different production environments. We work with different breeds and we work with which breeding goal fits the different in, environments. So, and this is to me important, but if we do, are not able to have the farmers and the breeding organizations to understand that, then we will not uh, come true with our ideas. Uh, again, in, in, in production herds, it's important, but that then we are back at herd level. It is, do not focus at single animals, use the genetics as a strategic tool and put goals for trade to be improved, including resilience. And, and we have to have farmers and organizations to understand that this resilience is important, especially in a very, in a world which is changing, both in relation to price settings in relation to to uh, climate and stuff and then they should set goal for which type of wheat would they like for their production system and will they even maybe use crossing they uh, they need to be that those yeah the third one is in fact for 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 the breeding organizations because they have to set also some uh, goals for the breeding schemes to be used together with the breeding goal that they would like to go for and then there can be something with use of sex semen and beef semen also. I think that was where I would stop just to say that the important thing is that 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 we can find the right breed a genetic for the right uh, uh, environments and I think now uh, Margot you can continue I'll move the slides when you ask me. Um, so I will just present some um, some slides about what we've been doing in Work Package 5.4. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been simulating two different dairy production environments, the West Atlantic and the Central Mountainous, and we made a breeding goal uh, for the West Atlantic where we have a correlation of milk with the total merit index of 0.7, and in the Central Mountainous this is 0.4. Um, and then what we, the aim of this study is to look at what, we, what happens if we put weight on resilience in the breeding goal. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so this is um, some of the breeding goals we've been working with. Um, so the basic scenario you see here is the breeding goal weight. So this will result in a correlation of 0.7 with milk production for the West Atlantic and 0.4 for Central Mountainous. Um, so it basically just means that in the West Atlantic we have a, a, milk, a breeding goal really based on milk production and then the Central Mountainous it's a more a, well, functional trait based, also milk production of course, but there's more relatively more weight on functional traits. And then we have this alternative scenarios uh, where we put more weight on what we call the true resilience, which is a trait that we are simulating, but of course we don't really know that in real life. Um, and then the, in the true two scenario, we put even more weight on true resilience. <clears throat> and uh, maybe I should explain what these traits are. We have milk production, beef production, dry matter intake, fertility, other health, body condition score, Ellen Var, which is from Monica Poppa's work, and then uh, true resilience. So this is what we've been simulating uh, so far, but we also want to see what happens if we put more weight on body condition score or Ellen Var as like indicator traits of resilience. Next slide. So this is the program Adam that Morton was talking about. So Adam is a stochastic simulation program where 
what well, you can simulate a lot of different things, but what we've been simulating is two different environments. I see here that we have the old names, but intensive, that's the West Atlantic and extensive is the central mountainous. So we have um, two different environments. We can simulate G by E and we can simulate that they select for different breeding goals in each of the environments. Um, yeah, and then we just have, we simulate some cows and we simulate genotyping steps and then we simulate um, embryo transfer and uh, selection of bulls is across environments here. Next slide. Here are some preliminary results. Uh, we've been running five replicates so far in Adam. Um, and then what you see here is genetic gain in genetic standard deviation units uh, for all the traits that we've included for the three different scenarios and in the West Atlantic environment. So yeah, you can see here that the basic scenario, we will have a lot of gain in milk production, but for example, fertility will uh, decline which is not really something that you want. And then if we put more weight on the resilience, then we will have more gain in resilience, but also most of the functional traits will be, will, um, yeah, genetic gain will increase. Next slide. Then in the central mountainous environment, we see a bit more of a balanced breeding goal, so a little bit less genetic gain in milk production and a bit more on the functional traits. And then of course the same trend, if we put more weight on resilience that we will increase resilience. Next slide. So what we would like to do with these results and how it can be used for stakeholders is um, hopefully something comparable to a paper from my PhD where we did something similar, but then with organic versus conventional dairy cattle um, so we have these different scenarios here, like a basic one and then organic breeding goal, meaning that you implement a specific breeding goal for this environment, um, and then which is more based on functional traits, and then within is restricted selection. And then I put these numbers, total merit index, so I put like relative gain in the total merit index to compare. So basically what these slides show is that um, on a, a genetic gain in the aggregate genotype, we, we don't really have a lot of difference between these scenarios, but on trade basis, we do have quite a lot of differences. So um, it just shows that um, we can like not lose that much money in, in, in total, but on a trade basis, we can breed for cows that have better fertility and less uh, mastitis. Yeah. I think that was my part. Yes, and, and, and what uh, we then need to do, it is with in this project, we should continue to have the focus on the importance of resilience in relation to future production systems and try to explain this both to the scientific uh, environment and, and, the, and the practical environment as well, uh, the users, the stakeholders. And, and uh, so, so uh, we should inform the breeding organizations, I think that's quite important, about these possibilities and, and, that, and have them to understand that these uh, possibilities is, is, and, and ideas are based on solid research results so that they'll be able, so that they can see the value of maybe having, maybe having two lines, one for a mountainous, production system and another line for an, uh, with, uh, Western Atlantic environment. And, and then I think outside the project, we need, because that's not included in this project yet, but it to have focus on the costs within dairy cattle breeding in, in, this, in relation to gain. And that we should have both from a breeding company view and from a farmer point of view, because it is so that most if you say what are the costs of doing genetic changes, then and say what can be gained at farms, then uh, it's in most cases it's worth doing these genetic improvements. But since we need to have a company in between, they also have to make maybe have some earnings, and and when they sell their genetic material to farmers, then it can be sometimes difficult for them 
to explain to farmers that they have to take a quite much higher price for a genetic material which is really fitted for the farmers. So that's what makes it a little bit a challenge sometimes to have these ideas to come true. So we have quite a, there is, we do have some uh, issues in, in, in telling, being better to tell the stakeholders what we are doing and the importance of that. What we would like uh, to, to, to discuss today with you, it is what, uh, if we have the time, uh, what will the influence of D by E at a higher level, if we expect more climate changes, then we will maybe see also some more D by E. What will that mean in, in relation to, to this year? And also to discuss with you and, and say, um, or we know that some breeds fit some, produce, some production systems better than others, but how to have this uh, explained well to the stakeholders. And again, even within the same area, should then maybe some breeds have different breeding goals if they have very different management systems. And will climate change and climate discussions have an impact on that? I think so, but how much? That's things that we would like to discuss with